How often do you have these dinners? These secret dinners. No one, no one knows we're here. Uh, in fact, um, <laughs> they think we're on vacation. Let's eat. <laughs> Talking the dinner party. This one is directed, co-written, and stars Miles Doliak, and uh, he's been actually being fairly prolific recently, uh, putting out a lot of horror-based content. And here he is in almost a chamber drama-style horror movie, and this really all takes place in one large mansion where a group of aristocrats invite a couple to dinner. Now, little do this couple know, these aristocrats have murder in mind. Not just murder, but they're talking cannibalism, necrophiliac, witchcraft, all sorts of fun stuff. And this unwitting couple are their latest victims. Now, uh, as the movie progresses, they, uh, they have them this dinner, and you can probably guess what might be on the menu. So let's talk about, first of all, what works in the dinner party. So this is um, almost like, I guess I said, it's like a chamber drama, really. If you don't know what that means, it essentially is a almost like a play that plays out with a limited number of cast in one or very few locations. The one location primarily being uh, the dinner room, but also we do go into a few other rooms here and there as well. So obviously a, a low budget movie without the kind of like set pieces, special effects, things like that. There is a degree of supernatural here, uh, but the, the effects are fairly kind of mini, you know, minuscule really. But nonetheless, um, this, this particular sort of dining room establishment, this house, looks fantastic and looks the part of a you know, very well-to-do uh, people basically so you it almost reminds me of elements of the purge where you have the kind of the uh, the upper the one percent feasting so to speak on the 99 percent and that's ultimately what's happening here and uh, as the movie progresses the obviously without kind of giving too much away we learn all of these people have certain kind of perversions so to speak that they want to not only just kill and eat these people but also put them through a number of different perversions as well and our kind of our dinner party is made up of all sort of prominent people a doctor a famous author things like this a fashion designer so it's an interesting kind of setup i have to say and when you don't have a huge budget obviously you're really kind of based based on uh, characters and our, our kind of our dinner hosts all look and act kind of suitably uh, aristocratic uh, and kind of like above the the station of uh, our two dinner guests so i didn't think the acting was too bad here i thought they they came across pretty well in their roles and believable as these kind of like very wealthy individuals who seemingly could just do whatever they want there are a few things that I enjoyed about this movie as well, some little touches. Now, inevitably, without kind of giving anything away, the worm turns is all I'm going to say. And that there's a seat when that actually happens, it's 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 glorious to watch. Is all I'll say. I also quite like some of the kind of the uh, uh, the, the it steers away from certain things that I, I thought would be cliche. For example. Uh, when these these rich people are ultimately having to uh, put the test with maybe if someone escapes they're not really like combat ready they're not particularly like well equipped to deal with this because they are ri rich aristocrats who always you know get other people to do the dirty work and things like this so they're ill-equipped to kind of to deal with it in, in a in a physical way and uh, and i thought that was quite good uh, and it didn't seem like they're they're, they're, they're always going to be like you know combat experts and and great with kind of kung fu and all will have weapons and things like that. It just gave it a, uh, you know, they're, they're ultimately, they're, they have the money, but they don't have necessarily uh, much in the way of skills outside of their chosen field to kind of do it. And it was just a small little touch that I kind of enjoyed here. Uh, there is a twist in the movie as well. And I've got to say, it, I, I didn't see it coming, although I suspected it'd be much, something similar to this. But uh, nonetheless, I thought it was quite an intriguing twist. Although it doesn't quite fully explain 
um, where it was going is the best way to describe that. And that kind of leads me into maybe what I didn't like so much. So the, again, I'm trying to be a, a, as subtle as I can in regards to this. When we have our twist at the end, and the motivations are revealed, let me say that, um, it's not entirely clear what those motivations actually are, is all I'll say in regards to that. What else? Okay, this movie is way too long. There really isn't the amount of story that this running time could have. Ideally, this would have been an 80-minute movie, I feel. But instead, it's it's like coming up, to, coming close to two hours. It just doesn't know it to be nowhere near that long. And I think part of the problem is, is the movie is very much in love with with showing us how lustrous our kind of our rich aristocratic characters are, and they, con they, they I mean, it must there must be about four or five occasions where this happens, where they'll start going into a, a, a kind of a story and telling you some type of tale of, of uh, you know, classic story or something like that, and it's like it, we 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 didn't do this ha this has happened once maybe, not like five times, um, but yeah, it just seems that the the running time is padded out, and these uh, these dinner guests seem oh, sorry dinner hosts seem to talk in a very slow and deliberate way and it's just like man there's just not enough here to to rate this kind of running time and I'm actually said even if you were looking at a a 90 minute running time I still think it, it would be slow uh, I actually think this movie could have been cut down to around 80 minutes and it to be uh, would be a more of a digestible movie because I feel this movie its main fault is that it treads water a lot. And because we don't really have much in the way of changing of scenery uh, and things like that, it becomes a little bit, not, not, maybe not dull exactly, because it is an interesting premise. But you, you, just, you just feel like you're aching for something more to happen on screen. And the movie isn't particularly kind of gory. When we do see the violence and stuff like that, it's more of a suggestion rather than anything too gratuitous. So if those of you expecting, you know, sort of the Texas Chainsaw Massive gore, there's a little bit of gore, but to be honest with you, it's, re it's relatively kind of tame on that sort of side. So, like I've said, it's a psychological chamber drama horror, is the best way I can describe that. If you enjoy going to the theatre and you're watching maybe a play, and that's kind of your entertainment, rather than watching a film, then I think this movie would, would definitely be of interest to you. Or if you just like slow burn, classic kind of like uh, literature style uh, horror movies, then maybe then. But I gotta say, I think most audiences will be a little bit perplexed about what they're actually kind of watching here. I do think it's a finely crafted movie for what it is. I don't think it has mass appeal, however. I'll give it a six out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I shall look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.